Hello and welcome to a, another Daily Muppet. On today's video, I am joined by At Ready Muppeteers, host of the United Muppeteers podcast. Today's video is sponsored by One Football. We've teamed up with One Football to help bring you the best in football news. If you're looking to keep up with everything going on these days, and it is a lot, download the One Football app today for free from the App Store. Their easy to use app is clean and attractive. You can see the latest transfers, the top news curated for you, match scores live, streaming without subscription, and so much more, all built and personalized for your interests. Click the link in the description below today to download the One Football app and get all your football news, aside from the Muppeteers, of course, all in one place. All right, so yeah, thanks for coming on and joining me today, Riddy. I know people have missed hearing from you, and it's been a while since we've had a chat on uh, on one of these <laughs> is that true i feel like hearing from me it i will is. say it when is. when we took took the little hiatus from the podcast which we did by the way and i'm sorry for everyone who enjoyed listening um, i'm actually still really grateful for everyone who who is looking forward to coming back i will say we took the hiatus because talking about united has been incredibly depressing and pretty bad for all of our collective mental health i don't know how james has been doing it um but it looks like things are starting may maybe to get a little on the up and up so um Hopefully things will start coming back. We can start doing more of these videos and podcasts. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 happy to be back on, and I'm and I'm looking forward to talking more about United. Got a lot of interesting yeah. things to talk about. Yep, there is a lot, and uh, don't be fooled by the clothes I'm wearing today. I am deeply depressed and uh, <laughs> about United, I should say. And uh, it's been uh, it's been hard doing the videos every day. Just to are cover you okay? Everything. Oh no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Are you sure? <laughs> Just, is this a cry for help? Like you know, no, 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 no. I am, I am deeply depressed. And definitely, definitely, there's not uh, more of that showing in in Patreon videos and things like that. Um, for the anybody who saw on. some of them, oh man, get your black hood on your little, your little, what is that, mason jar, and just like tears yeah. streaming down your face. Yeah. Oh, man. that was it. It's, it's that a was tough it. watch. Exclusive content. That is what that is. Yeah, exclu exclusive. Um, uh, soul bearing content <laughs> but anyway there's been a lot to talk about so uh, we gotta we gotta get to it um the first thing we want to talk about today is the deal that is at the verge of being completed that is expected for 60 million euros plus 10 million euros which is the signing of casemiro what the hell i mean a few months ago a few weeks ago a few days ago nobody would have expected this i was throwing my tantrums about this rabio nonsense last week and how a horrible a signing it would be i think a lot of people agree with that um there were some people who were on some some severe snorting some severe uh, hopium and copium on on rabio like being some great player he's not he's terrible his mother is a pain in the ass and none of this was a, a good idea but it did not happen and that is very very good so we want to talk about how this happened uh, because, you know, we've been we've been talking about the, the Glazers stuff. And in the recent video, I talked about how, you know, the Sancho 2020, how the Glazers kind of playbook is has been to when a deal is off to not tell anyone until they get these alternatives lined up. And you see Frank and Young, how sudden it was optimistic. We have assurances. We have assurances. Then suddenly they're going for Rabio and it looks unlikely. And they're about to pay Rabio 250000 a week, which is insane. And then suddenly it's off and they have Casemiro and the deal is done in three days. Three days, like just easy. And it goes to show that when United really want to make a deal and there's willingness from all parties and everyone is there, how quickly it can go and how anything else is, is crap. You don't need to if, realize that. I've tried to say, like, why does it slow down so much? It slows down because either they're lying about the willingness of the person to join, or they don't have the approval for the money that is needed to pay for the deal from Joel Glazer. Those are the only two reasons deals will take a long time. There is actually no other reason with United. And um, you can see how quick and decisive it is. Now, <clears throat> my information on how this happened is not really how they're putting it out from, um, uh, you know, how they're putting it out from the Madrid side. Um, the, from the Madrid side, they're saying that we jumped in on this whole thing and, and then Perez found out we were interested in buying Casemiro and they asked him. Not exactly. My understanding of it, because this is how Madrid do business, which is quite fair. Um, they've been easy to deal with and that's part of what made this deal go so smoothly, is that 
uh, they Perez put the feelers out about and let Casemiro's representatives and such know, hey, find out if there's any interest there. We've brought in Aurelian Chouameni. Casemiro's not starting. I think he expressed a little unhappiness. So they put the feelers out. If there'd be anybody interested, United leapt at the opportunity, called off Rabio in a heartbeat to pick up what is a dynamic, amazing, world-class number six, which we've all been crying out for. And frankly is completely a better fit than Frank de Jong, but we'll talk about why I think that in a minute, and I think a lot of people might agree. Um, United jumped on it, talked with the agent. Casemiro had a talk with Ancelotti um, and confirmed, you know, yeah, that he could go and that he's not totally in the plans, and, you know, he, obviously they've already replaced him for the future. And, and then the, the deal moved pretty quick from there. You pay what you need to, and... And on we go. And, and that's how it happened so quickly. But it was put out by Madrid first, technically, a little bit to just see if there was interest out there. And he was open to leaving. So my thoughts on the signing are that it is fantastic. I I think that people would be, you know, I, I've been concerned since day one, even about Frankie de Jong, that his ability to play by himself in that deep role is not cut out for the Premier League in the system, that you need much more of a defensive player much more physicality, someone to break a play, someone to shield the defense. And we haven't had that. And even if we signed Frankie de Jong, that we were going to need someone like this next to him. So we might as well just get him because we have a lot of players. And and this allows for a much more flexible midfield with Casemiro as the anchor. What do you think? Yeah, I'm still feel like I'm kind of pinching myself about this. It's, it's kind of unreal. I mean, it, it feels very similar to the Varane deal when that happened where, you know, it's just it just happens so it feels unreal to get a player of that quality and especially like with Ferran in a position we so so desperately need. I mean, I have three conspiracy theory. I have two. I have one conspiracy theory about this for sure, which is well, number one, I, I will just say real quick that it just goes to show how much Frankie De Jong did not want to come to United. I think this is probably the number one thing that it shows besides the fact that when there is a deal to be done, it gets done quick. Frankly, Frank and Young did not want us. If he did on the, the the single, the very first minute we had agreed to deal with Barcelona, which we had months ago, he absolutely would have just been a United player. He would have been playing against Brighton. He doesn't want to come. He didn't want to come. Casemiro did want to come. And I had been saying, I have said, that it would take a quality midfielder with a huge savior complex to want to come to United the way it is. And thank God Casemiro clearly has a savior complex. And I, I love the PR stuff about him, like thinking it's a lateral move. And I would say probably for the last 20 years, it's been a lateral move, right? Real Madrid to Manchester United has always been the two biggest clubs in the world, mm-hmm. etc. Yep. Right now, obviously not so much, but still, uh, you know, made my heart feel a little warm and fuzzy. That was great. My conspiracy theory is, is that, uh, Eric Ten Hag, and I mentioned this to you at one point, James, talk about this. Eric Ten Hag, after two games in the Prem, realized that the his little pivot was just not working, and so they needed to go super in on a DM, and look what happened. We got Casemiro. I mean, it just could not have been a better situation, and it really just goes to show it's just interesting where this money's coming from, which I think we're going to talk about, because we're gonna, next we're going to talk about this whole Antony... Gakpo thing. I know something recently just came out from Bert um, from the Telegraph, who is, I would say, by the way, has been the best, probably the best journal. Yeah, this, he called this Frank summer. Young off last week. The yeah. Rabio thing. He got on Casemiro real quick. Like, he's yeah, he's been, been the very, best. Very good. He says that Gakpo is a number priority, but I think what's interesting, and you know, I kind of as we talk about each player, I, I kind of want to talk about the takeover because I think it's relevant. Um, there's a question of where 60 million for Casemiro, 80 million for Anthony, which might be crap, and then a right back and a goalkeeper money comes from. So it just, it's an interesting thought to say, okay, well, why are the guys are suddenly pouring in this money? Um, and I, I do think that in this situation, Pouring in 200 million now could lead to a billion more of valuation for the club. 
which is which is where I think this is coming from. Wh- wh- where do you think this money is randomly coming from? Because it just kind of it just kind of came out of nowhere, right? Like yeah. Yep. It just came out of nowhere. Suddenly, suddenly well, they're willing to drop two hundred million on four players when we'd already bought three. A very interesting little yeah, it, event. It, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, look, I, I think that they had approved, you know, they had approved Young, the Young money, right? Because clearly they had. Because as soon as they agreed that fee, if you remember the breakthrough at the end of, of June and then again in July, as soon as that happened, they pressed on Malaysia. They bought Malaysia. They bought Martinez. They signed Erickson. As soon as that happened. And I remember talking about at the time that when they had it, they said, when they figured out what they'd spend on Diong, then they figured out all the other money. And with Diong not happening, then they're in a situation where they technically did have that money approved. So Casemiro's money makes sense. 60 million, 70 million total makes sense. Um, you know, that makes sense. That money is there. That That's okay. Um, Another little signing makes sense. A signing like Gakpo makes a lot of sense for for thirty five million because even though you're going over that eighty five that was set aside, you had you you've got James Garner for sale. Why would he need to be for sale if you had all this money? Um, yeah, I don't necessarily like that. By the way, yeah, I, I, I don't I like have that either. High on James yeah. Garner, I think there is. There is Let me ask you a there. question: Why is James Garner for sale before Scott McTominay? Someone explain oh, this, dude. Thing. Well, because I guess Scott Scott has had moments in the. This no, is going to be very. You already Scott know. Has had moments. Scott has had well, moments. You know. Here's the thing, though, right? You know for a fact that Scott McTominay is not good enough. You know it. He will never be right. What is he? Twenty six now. You know for a fact he's not good enough for what we need. We still have Fred. We have Bruno. We have Erickson. We have Van de Beek. Why is James Garner the one going? who probably has a higher potential than players who've already proven they're not good enough. It doesn't make sense to me, that part of it. But regardless, you could see a sale for, for James Garner. You could see Eric Bailly, who's going, who's on a loan with option as the news that's sort of coming out right now. I think, I think that'll work out for him. I yeah. think that's a good, I think that's a really it, good He needs it. Him. It'll probably be like Smalling. He'll end up being purchased next year for some cheap fee. I mean, Smalling's been great for Roma, I will say. Yep. He's been working out really well. He can't pass for his life, but obviously in Yeah, Syria, it's okay for that league. And to. I think yeah, Bayou will well. do well in, in France. I agree. I think Bayou will do great uh, in Marseille. So you have some money coming from, from there. Um, so that could fund, you know, the little extra leftover from De Jong. And a purchase of someone like Gakpo. But when you look at it and you say, well, they made an $80 million, $130 million offer for Yao Felix. <laughs> I don't believe that. They made $80 million for Anthony that's been rejected. And then there was a report that they're about to do $100. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me because they didn't approve this money earlier. This money was not there in May when they were looking at Darwin Nunez. This money was not there in June. This money was not there in July. They could have bought him for less back then if that money was approved. They didn't have any extra money, you see, outside of Mark, you know, the, the, the other positions they wanted. They didn't have the money. So why did they, how do they suddenly have $100 million? And it's concerning to me because you can look at it on a positive and say, well, they're just trying to throw the money out there, like you said. Throw as much money out there That's as what possible I That's what to I build the value of the club up because it's been so destructively bad the other possibility is they knew that offer wasn't going to be accepted and they made it which i think is a strong possibility just to give the appearance of money and they won't make that 100 million but we'll debate that in a second the third possibility is that they're plunging the club into debt further and looking at options to just envelop the club in debt and there's a story that came out here from, from Martin Ziegler at the Times, who's very good on financial stuff, that they might be expecting offers to basically do one of these Barcelona levers, sell off a future TV rights income, which, by the way, they just you just got a 150% increase from the U.S. TV market on Champions League and Europa League on the whole um, UEFA competitions approved. So TV money is going up selling the rights to future revenue off is no different to debt. Let me make that clear. When you look at it on, on a, on a, on a balance sheet or a profit and loss, if you reduce revenue, 
or increase your debt and expenses, there is no difference. I would argue, in fact, that increasing that um, reducing revenue is worse um, because of cash flow and all the things that go with it to spend money on. Um, but if you're taking, if you get a billion dollars now that you're losing 50 million over 20 years versus taking a billion dollar loan that you have to pay back over 20 years, there's no difference. It's the same thing. So don't get that twisted. That's debt. That is loss of future income. And anyone coming in and looking at the club is going to say, similar to debt, they're going to say, oh, well, I'm losing 50 million a year in revenue from this, which is no different than having it all in debt. So it's a terrible, terrible idea. It'll saddle the club up. And I'm, I'm worried that they're going to dig their heels in and think, well, we're going to make this work. We're going to make this work and, and start loading up on debt, making decisions like this, doing things in this manner that result in the club being in a, in a worse position yeah. in the future and make it harder to sell. And so that's yeah. why I'm super against the Anthony thing, because unless it's one, it's a bad signing for that price. It's not worth it. Not even a little bit. You know, again, we you have, Ready? you've got some numbers on this, but you know, the basic numbers, when we'll talk about Gakpo, but the basic numbers are, he has 12 goal contributions last year. In the Anthony Dutch does. League. Anthony has yeah. 12. Anthony has 12 goal contributions last year in the Dutch league. When we bought Sancho and we ended up paying like 90 million in the end, he had something like 45 for two straight years and he's struggling. That's a cautionary tale. It's a different league. And, and the Bundesliga is probably a little harder than the Dutch league, even though it is pretty open. Um, but it's not even at the best team in the Bundesliga. It's not even at Bayern. And he was doing that. And we didn't pay $100 million. And he'd been doing it for seasons. And it's three times it. And it's, it seems like a disgusting overpay, if it's true, that will have huge long-term consequences because they don't have the money for it. They do not have the cash to make this deal right now. It will come from somewhere. It will be debt. And so unless they're sure that it's going to increase the value of the club and that they're lining up the buyer, it could be hugely destructive to the long-term finances of the club. If they go spend $250 million this year and they're still owning the club by next summer, we're in trouble. We're in serious trouble because there's four or five other positions that need spending on that don't all need big players. Right back, goalkeeper, um, striker. Obviously, yes, you want a winger, maybe another midfielder. You don't have to spend huge in all of these areas yeah. to solve it, but you do need to fix these problems. And yeah, um, I want to. There wanna won't talk, be money. Yeah, I want to yeah. talk a little bit about the the TV rights thing. I have a couple things I want to say about that. For me, this thing with Apollo, this thing with the TV rights stuff, it feels like them just kind of exploring some options, right? Because at the end of the day, from what we've heard, and from what kind of the tier ones and whatever journals have said most of the Glazer family want out for sure. hundred percent. Avram and Joel probably want out for sure. The siblings and the wives and the children, they want out. Right. So you have most of the Glazer siblings besides Avram and Joel for sure wanting out. And I think what's kind of going on right now, and we've also heard by the way, that Avram and Joel probably want out, but I think maybe, for me, this feels like they're exploring their options. What could we do if we don't sell? Is there a way for us to retain the club, keep it good, make it profitable, et cetera, and not sell? So that's why I think they're looking at this Apollo thing. I think they're also looking at the TV rights situation. They're saying, what could we do? Um, and I think that at the end of the day, they're going to sell. And the reason I think they're going to sell is because, you know, what's going to end up happening is, is, is Avram and Joel are going to each receive probably a billion dollars each. That's not money they can get from the club's revenue, right? A little dividend here, a little profit there. That's not going to be a billion dollars. That's not going to be a billion dollars at all, right? And by the way, the, the Glazer family are atrocious in business. It's very similar to like all the story of you have a rich parent who made it big in business, they built the business and you have their kids just being absolute terrible, right? They're not good. All of their ventures have failed. The Buccaneers have been atrocious and I'm not going to give, you know, I know they just won, uh, they just won a, a, a Super Bowl, but that's not because of the Glazers. That's because a Kingmaker in Tom Brady and Gronkowski, Rob Gronkowski came to 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers brought them a win, and they're about to be terrible again. The Glazers are just the Glazer children are failures, right? So if I'm the if I'm a Glazer, I'm going to take that money and I'm going to run. The situation with the spending for me is basically saying, okay, let's put 200 million in now. Which, by the way, I don't think it's going to end up being 200 million. We'll talk. Let's talk. We'll talk about Gakpo in a second because I don't think it's going to be Anthony. I think it's going to be Gakpo, and for a number of reasons, one of them being financial, another one being talent. Um, while Anthony is a right wing, Gakpo being a, le- a left wing, I do think that if you want to have another winger, 25 goal contributions with Gakpo had in the Eredivisie last year versus Anthony's 12. Gakpo had as many goals as Anthony had entire goal contributions, so it's really not that much of a competition. They're also Gakpo's 23, Anthony's 22. From an age perspective, there's nothing there as well. Um, but I don't. I do think that a short-term investment. What it does is it signals to a potential buyer that you know there's a shot that they could still make Champions League this year because if they don't make Champions League this year, the actual value of the club will diminish. Right? The Adidas deal loses 70 billion or 70 million. It was a, it's a huge amount per season that they end up losing. I think it's 70 million. It's year. like 30. It's, it's not, it's I not think it's 70 huge. million over the course of the yeah, entire deal. Exactly. So 30 million yeah. per year. Yeah. So they lose 30 million per year, which over the value of the club will drop it. They won't get the Champions League money, which will drop the value of the club as well. So a short-term investment of a hundred million, 150 million, whatever it could be now could lead to more value in the club. Like I had said before, um, but I do think that they're just exploring their options. I don't. And the last thing I'll say about this TV rights deal is that it feels like it's unprecedented in the history of the Prem. And I think the Premier League will look at it and they'll look at La Liga. They'll look at all the crap La Liga has had to do in order to prop up the actual like clubs in their country. Um, the laws that they've had to pass in order for the Spanish clubs to buy and sell players you know, the, the levers that Barcelona are doing, they'll look at that and they'll say, that will dilute the product. And at the end of the day, part of what's going on is that Manchester United is going to, is diluting the Prem product and that's not good for the Premier League. And so they'll, A, they'll, they'll, they just won't let this TV stuff happen. There's no way they'll say that's good. And B, I do think there might be some pressure from the Prem themselves to get this sale happening just purely because, like I said, Manchester United starting to dilute the product. And when you, when you dilute the product, you dilute the product not only for the Premier League, you dilute it for all of the other clubs in the Premier League. And that's not good for revenue. And that's not good yep. for the Prem. So. And, and, and on top of that, realize that the, you know, the Glazers' whole takeover, which everyone is upset about, the leverage buyout, is illegal today. You know, they can't do that in the Premier League. You cannot buy a club in that way anymore. It shouldn't have been allowed. It was they've been grandfathered in to being allowed to continue to own the club despite that. And given that situation, you have to think if they start to make moves that could potentially put the club into further debt or sell off pieces of it without taking care of this debt that's been sitting there that should not be there and should not be allowed to be there, then they may put their foot down and say, no, you know what, like with most other rules, you've got a couple years to fix this. You need to get this debt paid off the next two years if you want to be making these kind of financial decisions because we've given you a leeway. We've said you could continue to own the club. We've said you can have this and all of that. But now you're making decisions to sell off further chunks of the club, put the club into more different situations, break off pieces, and potentially saddle it with even worse debts. You can't do that without taking care of that initial debt that you that you utilize to purchase the club. And so I do think that the Premier League and such will have to step in and will if they make certain decisions like this moving forward. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about the takeover stuff in the in the in a minute here. But speaking of yeah. Gakpo specifically, you saw that in terms of us Bert thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So he says that they're going to push for Gakpo. And this was our info was that. Gakpo is the, the target. It's, he doesn't say that after Casemiro, they're going for Anthony and Gakpo. Some people are assuming that because it's coming from different sources. I don't believe it. I mean, just think about that for a minute. Um, 150 million, 50 million, 45 million euros on Gakpo, 100 on Anthony. There's not a chance in hell they're spending a 300 million, no matter what's going on. There's no way they're spending 300 million. There's just no way. Not, not They can't. They can't do that. 
They can't fund the stadium right now. They can't fund improvements to the training grounds. They can't pay this kind of money. Yeah. And they shouldn't. And, and if they do, I'd be seriously concerned because then you've got to, instead of looking at transfers, say, where is that money coming from? If they spend $300 million on transfers this year, where is that money coming from? And I that mean, is concerning. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> that not is very coming concerning. from anywhere. Um, not from yeah. sales. Um, I will yeah. say, Bert did just say that he's expecting Manchester United to submit a formal bid for Cody Gakpo. Yeah. And they're now expected to sign him. He's their number one target to yeah. the options. He's saying that uh, after they holding were rejected, out, yeah, okay. For they're holding out for around thirty-eight million pounds, which is around forty 45. to forty-five million yeah. um, euros. Which, by the way, will be will be half of Anthony. So, yeah. Justin, from a financial standpoint, I think it, I think yeah. Gakpo makes the most sense. It, it does, and, and he says here that it's because of the offer being rejected by Anthony, which I think they always expected to be rejected, which is why they made it so people could think that they would try. And now they can turn to the target they were intending to get already, that they already knew was a better target for the cost, which is not the worst thing in the world, and signed Cody Gakpo. It says that in there that he wants to leave, that they'll sell regardless of Champions League, and when a bid is submitted, it'll likely go through. Um, the other thing with Gakpo is he can cover striker. He's, he's huge. The guy is huge. And he absolutely could become a striker uh, in the role of someone like Obama Yang or, or someone like that in the future. Um, he's a big dude and uh, very he's physical, six, two? very fast. Um, so, six, you know, he could cover striker because you have all this Ronaldo six, two. too. Yeah. He's six, and two. you watch he's him. He's, he's big. Like he is a big guy. Um, so he could, he could absolutely learn to do the job there. And um, so I think that's real interesting, but I, I expect that they'll get Gakpo. I think Casemiro and Gakpo, and that might be the window. I'm not sure they'll get anything else. Um the other possibilities are Wambasaka. They're looking at goalkeepers. We'll talk about goalkeepers in a second. Um, Wambasaka is closer to leaving. There's one other thing they're looking at, which is mentioned in this article that I do want to bring up. It says that Yannick Carrasco from Atletico is a backup to Gakpo. And what I do know is that Murtaugh was in discussions with with both Madrid clubs, as was reported by the El Chiringuito guys. And um, what he was looking at, from what I understand, is finding out if if they could get any of their forwards, which I think is where that fake Felix offer came from. That was so ridiculous. Yeah. So, because there's no way we made that offer. It's there's so no stupid. way. <laughs> there's no way. Because if you could get one of those forwards out, I think that's what would be required to get Ronaldo to Atletico, which might be the only possible route out for Ronaldo, which he wants, which Ten Hag wants, which a lot we of people want. want. No matter what they say, they want him out right now. That is a fact. It is Joel Glazer who does it. That's it. Yeah. Period. Another example of Joel Glazer getting his muddy little hands into the business. Yep. And by the way, it's not from a football line perspective. It's from a pure marketing mm-hmm. and revenue perspective. And yep. and it's I think it's bullshit too because at this yeah. point, I don't know who the hell is buying any 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 kits or anything. Yeah, but it's it, it, you know they don't even make money off of that. It's like the the name, the repute. Yeah, oh, like, no, sir. Well, he's a, that's he's bad. A, he's bad business because, because right. The thing is, this is where you get the point of them being bad at business. You don't make enough money in the long run. You don't make money from having Ronaldo. You make money from having success. You make money from winning. That is what will do it for Manchester United. They already have a huge fan base. They're not going to get more fans because Ronaldo came back on the long run. The day he leaves, all those Ronaldo fans are gone too. Realize that. No one's going to say, hey, I'm going to stick around and become a United fan now and and add to all of that because Ronaldo joined them. That's not how it works. Um you know, most of the people who are Ronaldo fans are Madrid fans, and they're going to stay Madrid fans forever. And now they're pissed at us for taking Casemiro, too. So these people are not becoming United fans in the future. Um, no, God, no. It makes no sense. So right back, Wambasaka is closer to leaving on loan or back to Palace. If that happens, there may be someone lined up, but I honestly don't know who. I don't know. Thomas Munier was the name that was mentioned before, who has been on prior lists. Um, but I've reached not out that, to... Wait, I do have a question about Desk, though. Yeah. So... Yeah. I don't know. What's going on with that? I honestly Jonathan know Schrager, what... Schrager had said, "There's nothing." Someone had right? said we were talking with Des. I think it was someone pretty reliable. Yeah, and I think he said Bert, was it no Bert? Talk. I don't know. Someone had said something about Des, and then Schrager comes out and says, um, "You know, Jonathan Schrager, I think is fairly reliable, but he basically said he had spoken yeah. to Des's um, representative. representative and said there's been no talk. So Des, I would love Des. Shijinho Des as an American." Um, 
He Who says does? that have not recently been in contact to discuss a possible transfer. No club has made an offer. This was two hours ago. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so I, I honestly, I don't think, I don't think there's anything in it. I think Gerard Romero's been talking at his ass all window. Honestly, he's been talking. Was there Romero who had said desk yeah. previously was? Ah, oh, okay, fine then. Yeah, yeah. Ger- Gerard Romero had one thing on Frankie, and he's been riding that for like three. Or four and he months. was wrong too. At when he said he that, wrong. he was wrong. He was so wrong. Frankie Young had basically just told us to fuck off the day before when he said it was like nearly done. It, he was so wrong. So. Anyway, moving on from that to goalkeeper, because I think if there was one purchase we could make, this is why especially I can't see $100 million for Anthony. If there's one purchase we could make that improved the team more than anything else, it would be goalkeeper. And unfortunately, Dean Henderson is on loan. And I was pretty upset when he gave an interview and started saying all this shit. And we talked about leaks and things like that. But you know what? I would do anything to have Dean Henderson back, especially God, now we've got Casemiro. Just... God, I can't... This is... The goalkeeper situation has to be the most frustrating thing for me in this whole thing. And I yep. feel for Dino, by the way. And obviously, for legal reasons, I have to say the word allegedly. Allegedly, I understand, allegedly, that Dino was the leaker, allegedly. Allegedly, Dino and Pogba and Lingard, allegedly, were leaking. <laughs> for allegedly. Legal purposes. allegedly. For legal purposes, allegedly, leaking. They were the, the leaks in, in the dressing room. I feel for Dino. Dino started last season as the far and wide, no doubt, everyone understands, he is the number one goalkeeper. The dude gets COVID, De Gea puts in a shift, and we're like, well, we can't drop him, right? And then the leagues start coming out. Obviously, Dino's now can't be played because he's, you know, whatever. But the, the, the one thing that's been consistent of our, like, during this really crappy season has been, and last season has been De Gea being the goalkeeper. Everyone knows De Gea is no longer the guy for the job. Let's just forgive Dino. Just recall the man. Bring him home. Bring Dino home. Yep. He's so good. Yep. And he's easily the number one goalkeeper at United. He's easily the number one goalkeeper for England. That I mean, his his performance for Forest during the last game, those saves were incredible. His distribution was incredible. His ability to come out and claim crosses and punch crosses during corners were incredible. And that penalty save was great. He has like a 57% penalty save rate. Unreal. Why is he not starting for us? Why is he at Forest? And yeah. I and the only thing that the only thing that brings me a bit of solace is the fact that if we were gonna sell Dino, we would have sold him to Forest instead of loaning. Yeah. So for me, exactly. there's a bit of a possibility that maybe we intend him to kind of earn his place back. But yeah, be that we need guy him now. Year. We need him yeah. now. We don't need. I him know, and I would say pay whatever now. it takes because like. I, I'm not even Dean's biggest fan, but when as soon as they said they're signing, I know, I know. As soon as they said they were Ten Hag was the coach, I put this was back in March. I was like, how's how's David De Gea fit this? His goalkeeper plays like a third center back, like is up there, like in your face, like way off his line, distributing, passing, like Allison or Ederson. Like, how does this work with David De Gea? And Dean Henderson fits this better than anything else. And David De Gea has been directly responsible for like five of the six goals conceded so far like an enormous amount straight up due to messing up and distribution problems and things like that and so it's ridiculous um and i think that is the worst thing so maybe they'll i mean i would play tom heaton right now i mean i would do anything, i would too 100 anything but this because it's straight up sabotage like come on the brentford game i know it was bad it was bad it was terrible we can it's rail awful. about everybody but look what happened you go in to, to like go get your game plan in place. Your goalkeeper just lets the ball in under his hands. Just complete and utter sham. Probably really rattles you. And, for and sure. just puts you down. And then and then what happens? He he just just terrible passing out the back for the next two goals. Like you gotta be kidding me. Like you you can't. You just you just can't. He may you know, as well have kicked into the net, honestly, at that point. Like, it's he just, just so passed ridiculous. it straight to the defense and gives them a second goal. Like, you can't account for that. As, and, and it's going to throw the entire team off. And you could say, well, they should come up. Come on. It throws everyone off. It was such a huge thing. It's just straight up sabotage. So so uh, I think you've, you had a hashtag you wanted to say for oh, this. But yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bring Dean home. Dino, bring Dino home. Yeah. You know, whenever you do a Glazers out, Jim Ratcliffe in, 
Make sure you add a bring Dino home. <laughs> bring Dino yeah. home. We need it. It's the only thing that's going to save our season unless we purchase. Did you have you heard anybody's? I've seen well, names. They, there was a talk about Yan Summer. There was talk about Begovic, but it doesn't seem like it's really moved anywhere. I think it'll be the last. Yeah. I think, and you know what? I I understand that it's embarrassing as the club structure that two, you know, it would be very embarrassing to recall Dean to three, two, three, four games of the season. Yep. Get over it. Just you know what's it. more embarrassing is David De Gea letting passing leading yep. to the other team's goals. And yep. what I what I think maybe they'll do from a financial standpoint, right? Is I don't there wasn't any word of a recall clause in yep. Dean's contract with Forrest. But Maybe what they'll do is after everything's done, they'll look and they'll say, will it be cheaper right now to purchase a new goalkeeper as backup or first team versus recalling Dean what we have to pay for us to get that done? If Forrest, it's possible, I, I don't honestly know. I don't know. We'll just I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I, I assume yeah. goalkeeper will be the last thing that's taken care of. Yep. I think probably right back. It's a, it's obviously a toss between right back and yep. goalkeeper. There was talks that maybe they want another midfielder. Yep. I don't know. That feels... At this point, what are we filling? Maybe a, a Scott role, um, yep. but then who are we? You know, who are we getting at that point? I, yep. I don't think Kessa. I don't think. Um, oh God, this is uh, Caicedo makes sense. Caicedo no, more. Of a I six. don't think we'll get another midfielder. Right no, now. I don't think so either. I just don't think so. So, all right. Well, so finally, you know, we've talked. To, we've we've kind of tied in the whole takeover stuff into everything that we've talked about. Um, but you know, to end it all off, where things are at, there's going to be a lot of talk about this. There's going to be a lot of conflicting information, um, you know. As we kind of put out, we heard about things with the with the sale a couple of weeks ago, and it's all kind of come forward, but very conflicting. Are they selling all of it, or is they selling part of it? Are there buyers lining up? Are they just looking to raise funds? Are they just looking to value shares? It's going to be very conflicting. This is a huge thing, but there's too much smoke going on for there not to be some legitimacy here. What we can say for sure is this. Jim Ratcliffe's company, Ineos, were absolutely talking about want to buy, wanting to buy and looking at it. They were absolutely doing that. And at least some of the shareholders, the Glazer siblings, want out right now. And it may be a battle. It may be piece by piece. It may be a long-running thing. It may be difficult. It may be putting the pressure on and keeping it going. It may not be quick. It may not be easy. It may not be everyone wants to sell. But there are cracks in the armor right now. Things will get messy. The reporting is going to be confusing. First, it's that you know, Apollo are looking to buy a minority stake. Then it's, no, they're just talking about looking at valuation of shares. Then it's talking about maybe someone's going to buy TV rights. It's confusing. And it is going to be confusing because the Glazers are in shit. Their businesses suck. Their financial decisions suck. They have a lot of debt. The, comp the, the United as a product is losing, not winning anymore. Sponsorships are pulling away. It's getting more difficult. The interest rates on debt is higher than ever. They're in trouble. There are six owners. Joel and Averin cannot hold out on their own. They will not have a majority if the rest of it is sold. So someone really could come in piece by piece and take this thing over if the pressure is put on there. And they may know that. And that may be why if anyone starts to talk about selling, it would have to result in a wholesale because you buy from two, then it's you've got a share, you've got such a chunk, you get one more, you probably could push everybody else out at that point. So I, there's a lot to go on there. So it just needs a lot of pressure and a lot of pushing to keep this up um, to get the Glazers out of here. But there's obviously something in it. This is all not by accident. These things don't happen by accident. These type of huge talks do not come around from nothing and not just because of a bad result on the pitch. Okay, They come from something. And um, I think the first time I heard it was actually even before our first game. So I know it wasn't as a result of what's happening on the pitch or even in the transfer market. So... Just keep that in mind, but it can be very messy. I don't think if you're expecting it to be as simple as being reported, the whole club is for sale, blah, blah, blah. Here's all your buyers. It's probably not going to come out like that. It's going to be very, very tricky. It may not be over quick. So keep the pressure on. Definitely, you know, just if anything new comes up, keep an eye on it. Um, but I think this is going to get yeah. messy before it's over. Yeah, and I, I will say, I will say, and this is a really important point, the protests, as James mm -hmm. uh, is saying, they're working. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. crazy to think that the sale of Manchester United will most likely be because, probably 85%, because of these protests. But yeah. in reality, in the United States, 
these protests are unprecedented. The closest thing we had was the Lakers fans protesting outside of Staples Center. And that was looked at as embarrassing. If people yep. laughed at it, right? The Glazers are probably really rattled by these yep. protests. And they're working. So yep. keep putting that pressure on. The Glazers, I think, realize that they're finally in over their head. And that because of these protests, they finally understand that this isn't just a business you can run to the ground. This is a this is a, a tradition, a hundred year old, hundred plus year old tradition for the people of and obviously I'm American, so just like I'm just whatever, you know, this is, this is a tradition in, in, in the country, in England. And I think the Glazers finally really understand that they realize they're in over their head and they're looking for a way out. And I think, I think like James said, it'll be messy, but I do think there is a, a path forward. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, keep pushing, you know, we'll keep supporting, we'll keep doing what I can. James is going to start releasing the Tiago tapes and all the information he has about how awfully um, Joel Glazer and all the Glazers have really ruined the club. That'll help with pressure. Hopefully we can get, you know, some journalists on it as well. Like there's things that we all can do. And what you can do is to be involved in the protests and be involved where you can go to them, you know, do what you can, but we're all pushing and I, and we think it's working. Yep, exactly. So that's what we've got for today. So again, thank you really for coming on um, to the, to the video today and, and talking as sort of a substitute for our podcasts. Um, make sure to, yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, um, I appreciate you having me on. It, it'll be, it's really good to be back talking about United. I, I think, you know, as things are looking a bit more up, I think we'll get back to the podcast video. We're going to, we're going to keep these video podcasts going. This is a really good, um, not no longer scared to show my face and feel a little better about that. Uh, obviously, but we'll go back to video podcasts. We'll keep up the podcast, keep up the content, keep up giving you guys the info that we hear. Um, and hopefully, you know, think we appreciate all of you for supporting us. We really do. Uh, it really means a lot to us that you guys take an interest in our platform, take an interest in watching us and, and show us the level of support that you guys do. We really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, good having you on and, and chatting. And, and again, to everybody, just just keep it up and we'll keep doing what we can. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications smash on. It. Smash it. Smash and, that like uh, and subscribe button. Follow me follow, on Twitter. Follow Ready Muppeteers on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. And, <laughs> so close um, to 11K. Big, big news for the, for my, there's fucker. All right, let's get out of here. We'll see you later. Thank see you. Ya.